Alright, welcome to another episode of All Things Ilyas. This is your host, Kumar Ilyas, and it has been a while. Probably one year and six months uh, if we round the time away off. Initially, I wanted to take a shorter break with my parents being here from overseas, and then that sort of uh, transformed into a hiatus that I wasn't... Um, planning to sort of you know have or take but that's how life is sometimes and on the uh, public demand of my 135 YouTube subscribers I am back to provide continuous maybe not as frequent Mm -hmm. entertainment and um, yeah it's good to be back a lot has happened in uh, this time. Actually, my parents were here for three months from overseas and I couldn't care about anything else, if I'm being honest. Uh, whoever is a migrant or is a migrant and sort of will go through this situation if they already haven't been, will realize that once you achieve the dream of showing your parents uh, the life that you have, that you have built, <clears throat> excuse more um yes uh so the migrants will probably they can attest to that feeling it's hard to sort of ex- like explain and express what exactly it is but that elation that happiness is unmatched to be able to show your parents the life that you've built and for them to be very happy about it and very receptive of it uh, my parents loved it here um went to Sydney for a bit, Uh, you know, we went to Manly, went to Coogee Beach, which my dad loved. My dad, who's usually very unemotional and stoic, was, you know, he he had a huge smile on on his face and he says to me, I haven't seen the ocean since I was a young boy. And it's, it's quite emotional, you know, seeing your parents just that happy and to sort of feel some sense of accomplishment that you were able to sort of do it for them Mm -hmm. and share this experience with them, which was amazing. Um, Yeah, I went to the Blue Mountains. I tried to sort of do it in a way that since since they're older, uh, they can't really sort of like physically exert as much. So um, the sort of uh, the adventures were limited to like shorter trips, like day trips, and a lot of quality time with each other, which I really loved and cherished. And then they left. Then they left, and I felt what they have felt because I've been away from home for over o- over ten years now. And so you know, um, they were here. We were having so much sort of like fun every day. And then they left, and then I had to go back to an empty house where they used to sit and watch the telly, have a chat. We used to cook food together. Um, You know, all the inside jokes, all the laughters. And then I was, the only time I just didn't want to go to an empty house. And then in perspective, you sort of understand what they have sort of been through with me being away. Because I, you know, I go to their house every year or two years. Um, eat their food, hang out with them, and then I up and leave. So they did, they did exactly that. But then I think I was very fortunate to see them. I've been able to see them every year for the last three years because I flew in, uh, flew back in uh, 2022. They were here last year. And earlier this year, I was able to fly back. So... Um, yeah, if you haven't been through this, whoever's, you know, if, if you've already had your parents uh, come here and stay with you, you can sort of understand. For those you haven't, I hope that you do because it's the, it's, it's the best feeling ever. And uh, then you can also attest to uh, how much happy and satisfied you sort of feel on the inside. Because again, I just, I couldn't care about anything else like work, like podcast, hobbies, anything. I didn't care, and it was amazing. So off to a bit of a um, whatever's been happening around the world, um, which has been sort of 
like weighing on me heavily and I'm assuming whoever's been in touch or whoever's been sort of have have had enough empathy and care in their hearts uh, and has seen on social media what's been happening in Palestine and Gaza. It's severely inhumane. And um, like there's a lot to unpack there, obviously. But in short, how I see that, um, as horrible and vicious as it is, I think the facade on the Western pioneering of human values has sort of uh, been exposed. With all the atrocities that the Palestinians have gone through for 75 years, and then obviously it's been amped up for, for since the last nine months, I think, since last year, October. And, uh, well, it's a reflection of the selective empathy which we have. Without going into too much detail, we care about atrocities that happen to people who are like us, who look like us, and we don't care as much about the other side. And that's exactly what we've seen in the two major global conflicts that have taken place recently. The reception of them were very different. And it's always interesting because nowadays the power of social media is, is has helped, I think, probably expose a lot of it. While the IDF films their atrocities as they mock and laugh, as they destroy everything that is very dear and close to the Palestinians, be it their schools, universities, their homes, their places of worship, and they're uploading all this evidence of their war crimes themselves. The media censorship is, <laughs> I think, again, which if we, if, if we talk about, you know, whatever has been exposed through this conflict, it's hard to even call that a conflict because a conflict, I would assume, is between two equal, even like parties. Here's, here, in this case, it's one-sided. Uh, there's an armed, spoiled, petulant, extremist regime which is obsessed with the occupation of the land, and there's the indigenous people of the land who've, who have suffered and are continuing to suffer these atrocities being committed against them. The media blockout here is and the watering down of the uh, of the atrocities that are carried out by the IDF is again it's just it's insane. Every time you see the headlines um, with the war crimes that have been committed by IDF, it's watered down. The alleged all the vocabulary that's used in describing the events. If something happens to the Israelis, um, they get attacked or they get killed, but the Palestinians just die. Alleged airstrikes, alleged invasions, alleged targeted attacks. 14,000 children have lost their lives due to this supposed conflict. And what it took for a major reaction was the targeted attack of the aid worker. And even recently, the human shield argument was exposed and thrown into the garbage with a wounded Palestinian man being tied up on a jeep, on a vehicle, and was was driven around in the occupied lands. It's It doesn't, like, the list of, of like, atrocities does not stop anywhere. You'll now even see a headline calling Senator Fatima Payman a rat for going against her party policy and voting in favor of a resolution that was presented by the Greens in the parliament. So the dehumanization and demonization of a certain people with a certain background has 
systemically being carried out in the West, but now the exorbitant amount of evidence that is that is present on social media, it's very hard. It's extremely hard to sort of keep everyone in the dark. And all of this, but with all the pain and the hopelessness that has been induced with these events, seeing this is very, very refreshing. It makes my heart happy. We are in good hands. A grandma in Wagga Wagga might be influenced by the demonizing media agenda, but their grandkids will reach a point where they'll have access to these tools like social media in which they'll use their own eyes and they will think independently about what exactly is happening and who is in the right and who is an apartheid colonizing, occupying POS. My parents were here and they loved their time here in Australia and they were very happy. Um, it shows you, like, it gives you another perspective of how good you have it and how good we have it. And you sort of learn to appreciate it more. With that being said, we celebrate diversity as long as the diverse group, they toe the line. As long as you're just, you acclimate and you're just quiet about these injustices being carried out, you're fine. As long as you don't raise your voice for your right, you're fine. And I think that right now is a problem for us. This also reminds me of a movie called War of Worlds uh, starring Tom Cruise and Dakota Fanning in which aliens, uh, they, they attack and they invade Earth. And um, I think throughout the movie, they realize that the killing machines that they've been using to sort of make human chum, be it men, women, or children. Um, so they use these machines that they sort of like buried on Earth when they visited like thousands of years ago, which would be their their claim to the land. And with all this planning and the killing and the invasion, and they're just going through, they're just like eliminating everyone they can with this right to the land, obviously, because they were here, you know, they were here first. Um, in the end, what kills them, what destroys them is a natural element of the land that they could never adapt to and that was water and I've been I've been thinking about that movie a lot because you can have an invading species trying to claim a right to a land but nature always has a right and has got the aptitude to balance itself and to sort of distinguish the like the indigenous population versus the space aliens. I'll uh, share another jewel with you that came back to me recently, which was, um, so in Pakistan, when you go to a barber, a barber is like, like a pillar of, of community. A barber can be a cook. A barber, obviously, you know, they would, they would uh, give you a haircut, they would trim your beard, they would circumcise your kid, and additionally, they would also shave your armpits. So I go to this barber that was, um, the shop was in my neighborhood that I, that I grew up in, and I go ask for a soldier cut. Now a soldier cut is your hairstyle when, um, You've got it very short on the sides and short on the top. Easy maintenance. And I would always do it because my mom would sort of emotionally, you know, be like, well, you're my good son. Go get a haircut. Get your haircut short. And I was probably like 11 or 12, maybe 13. So I'm at that phase where I'm in my head. I think I'm grown. So everything I do, I react 
as per my perception of how a grown man will react. So I go to this barber and I sit in the chair. I, I, I have a chat with him. He asks me what I'm after and I say I'm after a soldier cut. And he goes, hang on, I'll be with you in a sec. And in the shop, now it's hot. So the door to the shop is open. Um, and he's got pedestal fans in the corner. I think there's there's one at the entrance and there's another one sort of right behind where I'm at. And as he walks away, a guy comes in and they're having a chat and I'm just looking at myself in the mirror because why not? I'm handsome. I might have acne on my face, but who cares? Um, and then I sort of look to the side and the guy's got his arm up and he's getting his armpit chafed. But I don't want to look too long because I'm a grown man, right? I'm at that age where I'm too cool for anything. So I look away. I'm like, this is usual business. Who cares? And as I turn away, the pedestal fan that's like moving around, it blows that guy's armpit hair right on my face. Like sort of it goes past me. I think there was some on my lip. And I hear the bar the barber go, um, the hair's got in the boy's face. And the other guy just laughs. But I'm not looking back at them. I refuse to look back at them because if I don't react to it like a grown man wouldn't, it's fine. So it just goes by my face and there's a weight and I'm just looking straight ahead in the mirror. And then I, I get my hair cut. So I guess the moral of the story is that um, shave your armpits at home, guy. Shave your armpits at home. I do plan to keep these uh, uh, these episodes a bit short, so I'll leave you with um, another jewel on a lighter note. In your life, you'll go through really good times and then you'll go through really hard times. When you go through really hard times, your urge in your brain and, and your heart sometimes will be to fight. To fight and rise above whatever is happening, whatever has been holding you whatever's been holding you back and has been sort of like plaguing your progress. But when the going gets tough, sometimes I give up. Thank you for watching this episode of All Things Iliast. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Be good, be, be clean. Always use a bidet in the toilet and uh, don't dry wipe because that's not good. Wash your hands properly, bathe yourself every day, uh, shave your armpit hair at home, and um, yeah, and like floss your teeth or something, I don't know, like whatever, focus on your hygiene dude, cool, awesome, see ya.